Um, since I have a limited time, I'll go fast. I'll first start talking about Korean economy, and then I'll talk about R&D strategies in Korea, and the importance of nanotechnology and park systems, my uh, own company, and then uh, some examples of international cooperation. I have to uh, mention that initially I was going to present uh, Korean government policies to promote international cooperation, but I realized that there is no major activities going on uh, or plan yet. So instead, I'll talk about my own stories at Park Systems. Korea is an amazing country. As of this month, Korea, the population of Korea reached 50 million people. So, as of this month, Korea joins 27, 2050 club. That means uh, over 20,000 US dollar income per capita and 50 million uh, population, over 50 million populations. And there has been only six other countries, UK, Germany, France, Italy, Japan, and US. So Korea is uh, seventh. And there is about a dozen world-class industry in Korea, including shipbuilding, semiconductor steel to automobile and consumer electronics. Korea hosted the G20 Seoul Summit meeting in year 2010. And Korea uh, became, in 2009, the uh, eighth largest exporter and tenth largest importer in the world. Korea is the only developed country in the group of next 11. And Korea had the fastest growing economy from 1960s to 1990s. Just 50 years ago, Korea had nothing. Everything was destroyed after the Korean War and there is no infrastructure for industry, no capital, not many educated people, and so on. So considering that, the achievement we have done is really amazing, and some people call it miracle on the Han River. But you know, there is no such a thing like a miracle. The spectacular industrialization was government-driven project. It was based on fast follower, so basically, benchmarking successful companies and borrowed, using borrowed technology and basically copy others' product with a high efficiency production and low cost operation. The downside is those benefit was given to few selected companies, large company conglomerates, so land, capital, and labor was give provided at very low cost to them. Now, Korea is facing new challenges because we are becoming the world leader in few uh, segments. So we have to be in the full learner position. So there is no one else to follow, and we have to uh, develop new technologies on its own. So far, the difficulty is the technology base is rather narrow. And another social problem is deepening economic polarization, such as plutocratic nepotism, nepotism and super rich versus the rest. And the Gini uh, uh, coefficient is keep rising. So we need a new growth model. And I believe we have to shift from managerial economy to entrepreneurial economy. Entrepreneurship is really the key for the future industry. And we must provide supportive and encouraging environment for entrepreneurs. Indeed, new industry is created by entrepreneurial uh, companies like this. Let me move on R&D strategies. The R&D policies was mostly uh, industry demand oriented at the beginning in the 60s and 70s and later it became science and technology oriented. The key industry was primary industry, light industry, and later it became heavy 
and uh, electronics and transportation. Korea government keep increased its R&D budgets about 10% each year. So in the year 2010, it reached about 12.4 billion US dollar. Including private sectors, the total R&D expenditure in Korea is number uh, seven. It's, uh, I don't know if it's exactly the same as uh, uh, Dr. Choli Bai's data. Depends on the uh, date, it can be slightly different. US, Japan, Germany, France, UK, and China is ahead of us. But if we count the number of researchers, Korea is in fact ahead of UK and France. The current president, Lee myung bak declared low carbon green growth policies. Strategic green energy technology roadmap was created by considering market attraction and technical uh, importance for few segments. So now 10 core technology was chosen as the new growth engine that includes photovoltaic fuel cell, battery, green car, LED, smart grid, green IT, carbon capture and storage, water treatment, and future nuclear. We know how important the nanotechnology is. Most of the future technology development is based on nanotechnology progress. We need to understand what's going on in small scale, and we have to utilize such knowledge. So Korea started its nanotechnology initiative program from year 2001, and now we are in its third phase. And Korea government invested over $200 million every year for the last uh, uh, decade. And there was three major R&D projects in nanotechnology, including nano devices, nano materials, and nano mechatronics. All of them are about $100 million project over 10 years. And six national nano facility was built around the country. And as a result, the nanotechnology related paper was keep increasing, the publication number was keep increasing, and we are number three after China and US. Patent application shows similar trend. Keep increasing after China and US, we are number three. According to Lux research data, Korea is regarded one of the uh, most dominant and active country in nanotechnology uh, research. Let me move on uh, park systems. We make SPMs, scanning probe microscope, and SPM is really the key that opened the world to the uh, nano world. With, uh, the first member of SPM is scanning tunneling microscope. With STM, we can see individual atoms, and even we can move, relocate individual atoms. Atomic force microscope became more important than first STM. It really kicked off the nanotechnology era. AFM was invented at Professor Kelvin Quaid's laboratory at Stanford University when I was his student. So I was very fortunate. After graduation, I started the first AFM company in 1988, the name Park Scientific Instruments. And current Park System is my second company I started. The mission is to be the nanotechnology solutions partner. We started in 1997. There are about 120 people. And our headquarters is in metropolitan Seoul. We have offices in uh, California, Japan, Singapore, and we have application lab in Frankfurt. We have full product line of AFM, both research AFM and industrial AFM. I don't have time to go through all the detail, but this is basically the concept, conventional uh, AFM structure. Basically, uh, we measure interatomic force between the uh, tip and sample, and we uh, scan the sample in x, y, and z direction 
with a tube scanner, piezoelectric tube scanner. The problem of this conventional AFM is this tube scanner is not an ideal orthogonal 3D actuator. So there is a crosstalk. When you, you move X or Y, it affects Z and vice versa. So even with a flat sample, it doesn't look flat even after software correction. Another major problem is this tube scanner is a, a very hollow, weak structure mechanically. So it do not have fast enough G servo uh, capability. And that is very fatal for non-contact mode AFM. So that AFM technology innovation we uh, developed at Park System is let's get rid of this tube scanner and use flexure scanner. With the flexure scanner, we can get very flat scans. The scan size is about 80 by 80 micrometer. And the total run out G motion is well within one nanometer. And this stacked piezo also provides a very fast G servo uh, capability, so we can achieve true non contact mode, practical. Compared to tapping mode, non contact mode uses much small amplitude, and we minimize tip sample interaction. So the sample does not damage it or modify it, and the tip life is much longer. For example, this chromium nitride sample is very uh, spiky and abrasive. And if you use tapping mode, the tip wear out rather fast. So after a few images, the image looks dull because the tip is blunt. In non-contact mode, top, the tip remains sharp. It's sharpness after a few hundred images. Since we can preserve the very sharp end of the tip, we can get higher resolution images. And non-contact mode AFM, we detect the tip sample interaction not only at the end of the tip, but also on the side of the tip. So as it approach to a vertical wall, it can sense the interaction and quickly withdraw and it can climb up. This is an example. The trench depth is 3.7 micrometer. And we can go for industry. We can image LED lens array and silicon patterns, narrow and deep uh, trenches. Okay, let me go for examples of international cooperation. The first one is uh, programmable data density. Our customer, Seagate Normandale in US, they use our AFM to characterize the slide ahead of hard disk. The read-write head of hard disk is, has a cutting edge nanostructure. They are fighting for 0.1 nanometer. And they use our AFM to measure the height, pole tip, read tip, and write tips. But as the uh, tip gets smaller, data is getting smaller and smaller, the pole tip, right up tip, is not visible. That's a problem. So we developed something called programmable data density. And what that is, is not like, unlike a normal scan, we increase the scan line density in the region of interest and fire more pixels. So we get both higher pixel density in the region of uh, interest. So we effectively magnify the region of interest. Now, we, now the uh, right pole is clearly visible. And this is very important because we need to measure the height of this right pole compared to the ABS area. You cannot zoom in and re-image this AFM data. It has to be done in once. Another example is uh, done with the Seagate Fremont, again from US. They make hard disk media, and reviewing the defect is a very important task. And the defect is getting smaller and smaller, and AFM is about the only tool which can characterize exact shape. So far, they use the media with the laser scan system, Candela, and that laser scanner pre, uh, uh, generate defect maps, only coordinate in r theta coordinate, and then they bring it to the optical inspection system and mark manually where is the defects are with hyper optical microscope. And by using this uh, marker, they bring to AFM and image what the defect look like. Very tedious, very tedious, labor in intensive. So what we did was we converted R theta coordinate to XY coordinate 
in our AFM stage with a reference marker. It appears simple uh, in theory, but practically it involves lots of engineering if you consider all the errors, possible source of errors. But we did it, and we can generate all those defect images automatically, unattended. There are a few hundreds, so I cannot go through all those. Well, 450, uh, 484. Third example is about 3D AFM. Our customer, TDK in Asama, Japan, they brought up this sample. Can we measure this top width, middle width, and bottom width with AFM? I said, no. AFM can image only the visible surface from the top because the AFM tip approach from the top. But they have a very burning issue. They really want to measure those widths and angle and sidewall roughness and so on. And it is not only from TDK, it's coming asking by hard disk, other hard disk industry and semiconductor industry. So after a rigorous brainstorming, we thought, well, perhaps if we rotate the head, the Z axis can move up and down while we can scan sample in X directions. And as it scan from the right side to the left, we can get at least one side, right? And rotate the head from the other direction and do the same thing, scan from the left to the right. And we can combine those two or uh, well, three images taken from the top. And in order to do that, we had to develop a new special head, very, uh, very narrow uh, head, and then special tip, so that we have to make sure the other parts of the probe do not touch the sample. This is an actual photo of instrument. Head is sitting at the center, rotate to the left, rotate to the right, and we can get very nice result. Of course, it took many years of engineering. Image from the left, center, and right, those three uh, lines, and we can merge all those, you can guess. And of course, we can get a very nice 3D rendering image. Okay, the next example is polymer pan lithography. This was uh, done with uh, Professor Chad Merkin at Northwestern University in US. This PPL is, has, a good, has a great potential to become a practical nano manufacturing but they require precise leveling of the pen array and good optical vision from the top. So we had to uh, modify and develop a special platform for them. And they liked it very much. They, it was very productive, so they get great result, and they appreciate us many, many times, if you read the Nature paper. The last one is scanning ion conductance microscope. This is for biology application, and we got Good, good result with uh, Niigata University in Japan. For biologists, they want to see samples in sitting inside a uh, petri dish, and we use a uh, nano pipette instead of AFM probe. And this SICM do not apply any physical force, so we can get precise image of the sample, very pristine condition. Very nice images in liquid. Red tri trichia cells is compares very well with uh, SEM image. And this is much easier to get compared to this. And this is dead. It's dried, fixed. You cannot do any further experiment. We can even image live cells, HeLa cells, the famous uh, cancer cells. And this is the first time that we, uh, I mean, the, the live cell surface was imaged. Because if you consider live cells, you cannot use no other technique but optical microscope, which do not have enough resolution. But with the SICM, we were able to image a beautiful surface. Look at how complex the cell uh, membrane looks. And also, we can do patch clamping recording. So we can go specific point and measure its ionic current. So in, in conclusion, Korea has achieved spectacular industrialization and government-driven economic development program played a key role. R&D has been the national agenda in Korea. 
nanotechnology is the basis of future technology. Park System is a nanotechnology solutions partner providing the most advanced AFM and SPMs. True non-contact mode AFM, 3D AFM, and SICM will open a new horizon for nanoscale measurement and characterization. And lastly, we are looking for new partners in Europe. Thank you very much for your attention.